welcome to section 3 of the bracket assembly tutorial. In this video, materials and properties are going to be created for the different model regions. The geometry will be meshed and then the meshes will be connected. Bar elements and RBE2 elements will be used to represent the bolts. The base bracket will be map meshed while the arm model will be meshed with tetrahedral elements. First, we are going to create the materials for our model. Create materials 11, 12, and 13 by expanding the model icon in the model info toolbox, right clicking on materials and selecting new. Click load to load a material. Be sure to change the library to the metric library. Click on choose library. Go to the FEMAP program folder and select the metric unit.esp file. This is mat ang mm and ton degrees c watts.esp. This program folder might be in a different folder depending on how FEMAP was installed on your computer. Now with this library selected, pick Stainless Steel 316 Specialty for Material 11. You can use the search bar to quickly find the material. Make sure to use double digit numbers for material IDs. Single digit numbers are used by internal processes such as imports and scripts. Note that the material properties are now defined. It is important to note that FEMAP is unitless, so units must be consistent for all parts of the model. In this case, we are using metric units consistently for everything, including material properties, loads, and element sizes. Then click OK once the material is selected. Since the FEMAP preference auto repeat create commands is enabled, the material creation dialog will reopen for the next material ID once a material is created. Now perform the same process with aluminum 2024 annealed rod for material 12 and stainless steel 174 pH for material 13. Click cancel after you finish creating material 13. To create a new property, right click on properties under model in the model info toolbox. Select new. Click on Alem property type and set the value to plate if the element type is not plate already. Set the property ID to 11, thickness to 3 mm, and title to base underscore bracket underscore 3 mm, and assign material 11. Click OK. Enter an ID of 12 and a title of arm underscore solid. Select material 12 for the solid property. Click Alem property type and set the value to solid. Click OK twice. Enter ID of 13, select Material 13, and set the title to Bolt. Click Lem Property Type and set the value to Beam. Click Shape to enter a standard shape as a circular bar with a radius of 4.5. Click OK. Click OK and then cancel the property creation. The parts are now ready to be meshed. In the Model Info Toolbox, expand the Geometry Part Tree, right click on the checkbox next to Base Bracket and select Show Selected Only. Use Mesh, Mesh Control, Size on Surface to set the mesh size. In the Select Surface dialog, click Method and select On Solid. Select Base Bracket. Set the following settings in the Automatic Mesh Sizing dialog. Element Size, 3. Max Angle Tolerance, 10. Uncheck Max LM on Small Feature and Suppress Short Edges. The user can get more information on mesh options by exploring the FEMAP Help options. Click OK and click Cancel. You can now save the mesh controls that were applied to the surfaces in the solid. Use Mesh, Geometry, Surface to mesh the base bracket. In the Entity Selection dialog, change the method to On Solid and select the bracket. In Auto Mesh Surfaces, change the property to 11. Make sure the mesh is set to Quad and that Mapped Meshing Options is set to On. The bracket has now been meshed. Use the Meshing Toolbox to check the quality of the mesh. Use Tools, Meshing Toolbox if the box is not already open on the left. Expand the Surface Mesh Quality menu. Toggle on the Quality button at the top of the toolbox. And change the Quality Type to Jacobian and Number of Quality Levels to 4. The Jacobian quality of each element in the mesh is displayed. The Jacobian quality generally correlates to results accuracy, so better quality elements will ensure more accurate results. Lower quality elements are red, and higher quality elements are green. To adjust the mesh sizing, expand the mesh sizing menu in the meshing toolbox. Turn on the display of mesh size by pressing F6 to open the view options. Going to view, options would also work. Select the option curve from mesh under the category labels, entities, and color. Check the draw entity checkbox, and in the show as prompt, select three symbols and count. Click OK. The mesh size on each curve is now visible. Select Set To, 
in the Operation options, change the number of elements to 16, and toggle on the Select button above to enable the selection of curves. Select both the arcs on each hole to change the number of elements to 16. Now change the number of elements to 8, and select each of the quarter arcs in the washers around the holes. Also select each of the outer arcs on the flanges on the bracket, and the lines going across the bracket on the two slopes. Now that we have completed meshing the base bracket, go to the Model Info Toolbox. We are now going to begin meshing the arm. In the Model Info Toolbox, activate the geometry containing the arm. Right-click on the corresponding checkbox and select Show Selected Only to hide other geometries. Expand the Model Properties icon. Uncheck Property 11 to hide the mesh of the base bracket. In the Model Info Toolbox, right-click on the geometry containing the arm and select Mesh Size. Make sure it is set to Tet Meshing, and set the element size to 3. Uncheck Max Element on Small Feature, set Max Angle Tolerance to 10, and uncheck Suppress Short Edges. Click OK. Right-click on the geometry and select Tet Mesh. In the Auto Mesh Solids dialog, set the property to Property 12. Click OK to mesh the part. Now we are going to change how the meshes are displayed in the graphics window. Change the colors of the meshes using their respective properties. In the Model Info Toolbox, check All Properties. Right-click Property 11 and select Edit. Click Palette and select a gray color. Click OK on all dialogs. Repeat the process with Property 12 and select a shade of blue. Use F6 to open the View Options dialog again. Under the Labels, Entities, and Color category, select Element. Select three property colors under Color Mode and click OK. Press Ctrl G to refresh the graphics window. You can now see how the two meshes have different colors. Now we are going to model the bolts. Use Custom, Tools, Add Tools, and select Hole to Hole Fastener using Surfaces.bas. This is how you add in custom FEMAP APIs, which can be used to streamline different processes in FEMAP and interface with outside programs. Use custom tools, hole to hole fastener using surfaces, to create the bold elements connecting the two parts together. In the Model Info Toolbox, check the Base Bracket Geometry item to display it in the Graphics window. In the Select One Arc on the start of the hole, select an arc around the hole on the arm. In the Entity Selection dialog, select the two washer surfaces around the corresponding hole. Repeat this process with the corresponding hole on the base bracket. Repeat the command with the other hole. Click Cancel after the second bolt is created. Turn off the display of the arm elements and the arm geometry to see the beam elements more clearly. Red lines around the arcs and a single blue line going through each hole now appear showing rigid elements and a beam element respectively. It is important to note that these bolt connections can also be made manually. Now we are going to change the property of the bolts that were just created. Expand the Model, Element, By Type items in the Model Info window. Right click the Beam Linear item and select Edit. Change the property to property 13. Repeat this in the second dialog that appears for the second beam. Select the two properties created by the hole to hole fastener using surfaces command and delete them. Save the model. This concludes the section 3 video of the bracket assembly tutorial.